Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. I pray that as we have been doing a, a few new uh, series subjects that you are enjoying the content and which we have been sharing and today we are starting a new series this actually helps us uh, going into a level that we are supposed to go in on yesterday I looked at uh, online and I wanted to see how many days are left in the year Yesterday, it was at 57, so today we are at 56 days left in this year. And we have been taking a look at our visions and planning with purpose. This week, we're going to look at accountability. Now, the thing about this particular series is we're not looking at the accountability of others around us. This is self-reflective. So, I'm going to tell you, and I just posted this simply because it is true. This type of conversation is very uncomfortable. And anytime we give a word anytime we share a word i want to make it 100 percent clear that the words that i am sharing i i'm the first partaker i am responsible for these words and and so i share them because i believe collectively we can all grow it is a time to examine one's commitment and accountability and I'm going to share with you what I just posted it's already on the Facebook page for the balance of life and it says talk to me Tuesday because <laughs> as I'm sitting here and we're talking about accountability and we're also going to discuss part one of this series for this week asking a very very important question whose vision is it anyway which brings us with what I'm going to share with you now the truth of the matter is that the person with the vision actually determines its success the person with the vision determines its success And many may say, how? Well, first of all, we must recognize who the vision was given to. Before we share any content of the vision, we must have clarity. We must have an understanding of its purpose. So we should not jump ahead prematurely and start sharing details before we have clarity also the person with the vision must not forget in determining and knowing the difference between those that are part of building the vision and those that are to become recipients of that vision. And there is a huge difference. Oftentimes when we don't know the difference, we include individuals to work the vision when in actuality they are to become recipients. And when we don't know the difference, it all comes back to the visionary. It all comes back. Whenever I visit a establishment,
then I look at the type of service I receive. It is not fair at all times to blame the individual who is currently serving you. In all actuality, we have to look at the manage managerial style. How were they trained? And I often come to this determination when I talk to one person, they tell me one thing, and I talk to another person, and they're saying something totally different. That tells me that they were not trained properly. And if they sat in the same training course when they were released to help others, if those things that were not corrected that were in error or not corrected then we do have a problem and it goes back to who the manager it really does so and I posted and I am not ashamed to say that this accountability series is making me step on my own feet because I determine the success of what God gave me. I do. I determine that. I determine that based off of my level of commitment. Do I have clarity of the vision? Am I following God's instructions and his directions? It goes back to the individual that the vision was given to. Not only that, Whenever we have a vision and we begin to connect with individuals who are part of carrying out the vision, we must give them clarity. We must give them all of the tools that they need to carry out that vision. And the most important tool is clarity on the vision and your expectations of the outcome that you want. If that individual does not have clarity walking away from you but going to do a job, it is your responsibility to make sure that they understand. So don't be afraid to ask the question, do you understand the goal that we're trying to reach? Make sure that they have clarity. And when they begin to work and, and set things in order, you don't want to micromanage them, but you want to get a periodic update of their progress. And with periodic updates on their progress, then you can see and determine if they fully understood the assignment. But the question goes back to this, whose vision is it anyway? Along with the understanding that the, the success of that vision becomes the responsibility of the one who was given the vision. Oftentimes, we like to point the finger and say someone dropped the ball. Well, listen to this. We have to know what's going on. And we have to check back. And we have to have these meetings and, and, and see how things are going. It goes back to the one who has the vision. And I know that is a very, very hard pill to swallow. Because a lot of us, yes, I include myself, we want to be confident that we can release someone to do something and not look back at it just 
okay they got it it's done but they if they don't have clarity and let me say this the individual must feel welcome and comfortable enough to come back to say uh, there's just something about this there's a detail that I'm missing I need more clarity they should be allowed some latitude and feel comfortable enough to come back and say you know I'm, um, this portion right here I'm just really not understanding that but the success of that vision is in the hands of the one who was given the vision if you have some slackers on your team identify the slackers find out if that is their area of working if it's not well first of all we should have prayed to make sure that they are in their corrective area of working and if we find that they are not then we need to pray and determine by the guidance of the Holy Spirit exactly where they should be positioned if they are positioned in the right place once again maybe they should have been a recipient of the vision and not a carrier or a builder of the vision If you continue to see a, a path of slack, then my visionaries, I have, listen, you have to roll up your sleeves and you have to get in there and get the job done. Whether it's reassigning someone or having some knowledge of the area that needs to be done this is why I encourage uh, those with the vision purpose goals and dreams I encourage you to have basic knowledge of everything concerning your vision and I know someone may say well oh I don't have time to do all of that listen the determination of your vision the success of it the success that you're looking for it all lies within you and therefore you should have some basic knowledge of your organization what it takes to operate it not everyone is going to have a huge staff they're not they're going to you might have one or two look at look at Gideon I love to use this example of Gideon because a lot of times a visionary will only go so far with an excuse of I don't have a lot of people in place and I'm telling you that's just an excuse whatever God gave you to do he will equip you to do it don't worry about trying to push the job off on somebody else you learn it you learn the odds and ends in it because it's yours so spend some time learning about your develop a, a, a bookkeeping method inventory method how to promote and publicize what you do if you don't buy it how do you expect somebody else to buy it if you don't promote it how do you expect somebody else to do it you're the first partaker and the way to execute a vision for individuals to come and to buy into what you're doing is to see that you are the first partaker in it. You're leading the way. And if you're getting 
your hands dirty. You're if you're getting into the work and you're working, I tell you that they will respect you more. And they won't feel like they're the only ones just doing everything that you are part of it. And so when it comes to this accountability series, we are really, really looking at our own accountability. And if I do have individuals, let me tell you, this accountability is so uncomfortable that I have put it a place to do certain things. I can't jump in and do it for them. Yes, I have the basic knowledge of, of how I want it done and what I'm doing. But once I release that work to them, I have to trust them to do the work. Only time I need to step in and, and have some conversations and do some redirecting if it's not being done. But I first must build a trust with that individual to let them do the work. But if I'm always stepping in the way and doing it for them, I don't know their ability. And I am handicapping them from growing further. This is a part of accountability. So as we we're looking at um, the last days of 2024, Take a look at what God has given you. What has God placed within you? You have a vision. You you have a, you know your purpose. You know the goal that you want to reach. And realistically ask yourself, what are you doing to reach those goals? And that is a part of accountability. Am I putting in the work to reach these goals? I know what God gave me. I know what he laid on my heart. But realistically, what am I doing? Because God is not coming down off the throne to do the work for us. He has already done what he is going to do. He has already given us the help that we need, which is the Holy Spirit. If we do not ask for that which he is ready to provide it's already there wisdom knowledge and understanding it belongs to you counsel the dunamis power the help of the holy spirit all of those things are set in place but if we're not utilizing them when it does not work out according to what we were allowed to see I'm sorry to say this, and I'm talking to myself first. We don't have nobody else to blame. Put in the work. Where scripture says, study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Listen, that, that goes to this as well. Put in the work. How is it that we want something and we don't know anything about it? Mm -hmm. That's why we need clarity and understanding of our own visions. Because there is a specific way, according to your ability, according to your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding, that God will give you a vision. It is based off of the gifts and talents that you already possess. And no, all of those gifts and talents are not going to be uh, discovered all at one time. They are released according to how you flow in the journey. Oh, help me here. Because guess what? If we get stagnant in the journey, those gifts and talents are risen to surface. Because we're not trying to push any further. This is accountability. This is real accountability here. 
If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God is absolutely good, and He is amazing. Starting today, and we will also share on Wednesday as well as Thursday, we are in a new series entitled The Accountability Series. Now today we're looking at whose vision is it anyway. On tomorrow, November the 6th, we are looking at building one block at a time. And on Thursday, following the path to the fulfillment of the vision. And so uh, we do have a flyer up on our Facebook page for The Balance of Life. Check it out. And also um, some other things that we have in store for you every Monday at 7 o'clock p.m. for the month of November. Actually, we started October the 28th and we will go through November 28th on Monday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. We are sharing from our course, Sounding the Alarm. It is a teaching on the mantleship of the prophet. This book is available via our website as well as on Amazon if you would like to obtain a copy of the book, Sounding the Alarm, a Biblical Teaching on the Mantleship of the Prophet. The book is $15 per copy. What we share on that particular podcast on Monday nights, and this is via Podbean, we have provided the information on our Facebook page for The Balance of Life as well as our website is absolutely free. Please visit our website at www.angelferguson-ministries.com and go over to the radio ministry and you will see what we have in store for you as well as curriculum. Also, On Saturday mornings, we started this past Saturday, November the 2nd through January the 4th, we are teaching the overview of the Ascension gifts. And we have opened up the classroom. This is virtual classroom. We have opened it up. If you are interested in sitting in on the class, simply email us here at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com. During the overview of the Ascension Gifts course, uh, we've covered just an overview of the course itself. Weeks two through three, we're going to discuss the mandate of the apostle. Week four, the obligations of the prophet. Weeks five through six, the eyes of the pastor. Weeks seven through eight, the reach of the evangelist. Weeks 9 through 10, the dedication of the teacher. Now, we are utilizing two of our textbooks, along, of course, number one, the Word of God. We are utilizing our textbook, Discovering Your Ministry and Spiritual Gifts, as well as the Overview of the Ascension Gifts. Also, on Fridays, via Spryker Radio, We have another podcast entitled From the Classroom. It is an extension of our virtual classroom. So what we did is we created two different platforms uh, to extend from our virtual classroom. One is on Podbean. The other is here on Spryker. On Friday mornings for the month of November, we are uh, sharing from our course on spiritual growth. We are utilizing, of course, the Word of God and our textbook, A Breakthrough in My Life, A Guide to Spiritual Growth. You can purchase the textbooks individually. They are all listed on our website as well as on Amazon. And all of this information has been made available for you conveniently on our website as well as on the Facebook page for The Balance of Life. Uh, If you have not, you can uh, like and share, follow our page on The Balance of Life to keep you up to date.
with what's going on with us. And we love to hear from you. We love to receive emails from our listening audience on how this ministry has impacted your life. I know sometimes that our topics are kind of heavy, but it is because I literally know that there is potential in you. How do I know that there is potential in you? Because God Almighty created us. We all belong to God. And there is great potential in each and every one of our lives. Now, what we all have to do is we have to find out why we were created. That's right. We all have to find out why we were created. And do you not know that we then have the opportunity, the choice to agree or disagree with what God said? We do. He does not force it on us. He does not push it on us. We decide whether to accept or reject why he created us, the gifts and talents he gave us. And we also have a choice on how we utilize what he gave us. I thank God that I made the decision to use what he gave me for the building of the kingdom of heaven. To lift up, encourage one another. To let you know that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. We have help. But at some point in this journey, we grow to a level of maturity which says, I am held accountable for what he gave me. I can't push the blame on anybody else. I often have heard my father, Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. say that we're going to be faced with a question of what did you do with my word? Meaning what did I what did you do with what I gave you? Mhm. What did you do with it? Which brings us back to accountability. What did I do with the word he gave me? And so over the past weeks as we've been looking at and being more intentional with bringing you content built around a series. It's putting me in a place of being more accountable. And I tell you a couple of weeks ago, um, paying, you know, bills for the ministry and it hit me, it came to me and I know it was none other than the Holy Spirit. So like our, our time here for radio, we pay that bill once a month. But what are you really doing in that 30 day period of time? I'm like, ouch, what are you really doing? That's accountability. But yesterday as I was sitting and uh, it came to me, how many days are left in this year? I know scripture says take no thought of tomorrow, but faith, faith is now. So we have to utilize each and every day. So I want to leave you with this thought. What if you only had 56 days left to live? What if God said that's all you got? What are you going to do in that time? It's not too late to start. And it is not past the time for you to finish some stuff. Take accountability. Get up. Let's get it together. Let's make a little bit of space. Ten minutes goes a long way. If that's your time of reading, if that's your time of updating, 10 minutes, if you start with 10 minutes and grow from there, I can only imagine what you can get done. But it is time for us to take accountability. You said yes, I said yes, 
Let's get to work. That's our time today for here on the Balance of Life. Listen, I absolutely love each and every one of you without measure. And if he prolongs his return, we'll chat tomorrow. Have a blessed day in the Lord.